What's up guys? Welcome back again to your Heroclix headquarters. Today we're going to be looking at part two of my Eternal set review covering all the rares and chases. So if you guys haven't already looked at all the commons, go ahead and check that out. But without further ado, let's get right back to the review. We have our first rare, number 12, back to Cersei. And now this is where things get pretty crazy because this is like full power version of all of them. She's got Cosmic Energy Team Ability, she's 125 points with 8 range double target, 10 movement with sidestep and flight, 11 attack with a special attack power, 18 defense with invulnerability, and 3 damage with some outwit, and she has a new trait, God's Hidden Among Mortals, until Cersei makes an attack, takes damage, or is the last character on your force, she can't be targeted by non-adjacent opposing characters. So that's pretty amazing, and it's funny because like the last trait made it hard for characters to get adjacent to them, this trait makes it like almost impossible for anybody to shoot them until somebody else has already gotten adjacent and you know hit them and taken some damage. Um, so that's pretty cool. That keeps them very well protected from all types of range, and it's just targeted. So it's not by, you know, shot with an attack or anything. They can't target them with, you know, prob, outwit, perplex, anything like that. I mean, she's cosmic energy, so they can't outwit her anyway, but you know what I mean. Um, pretty awesome trait, and I'm pretty sure all the rares after this point have that trait, and I love this trait a lot. Um, then she also has another trait, beneficial transformation free. Choose a standard friendly character within range and line of fire. Then choose Giant Symbol, Tiny Symbol, Wing Symbol, or a copyable team ability a character on the map can use. The chosen character can use the chosen effect until your next turn. Um, so that's pretty great. You know, Giant Symbol for Giant Reach. Unfortunately, because it's until your next turn, you're not going to get the Willpower roll at the beginning of your next turn, because it'll be off by then. Um, but Tiny Symbol gives them some defense from range. Wing Symbol, you know, lets them get around easier and carry people. Um, or a copyable team ability, depending on what's on the map, that could be really useful as well. Um, and that's just a free action. Uh, and since that's any standard friendly character within range and line of fire, she can use that on herself as well if you need to. But then she's got a special attack power that gives her incapacitate, and when she uses it, after resolutions, you may generate up to two blocking terrain markers adjacent to a hit target. At the beginning of your next turn, remove those markers. So. You know, unlike the last one where she actually made them immobile while they were next to blocking, this one just incapacitates them and then puts two blocking markers up. So depending on where they're at, that could be really useful or it might just be a minor annoyance for them to have to run around it or something. Um, but at least shutting off their line of fire, you know, that could be really good if like you're trying to incap somebody and they have prob or outwit or something, you're just trying to sh cut off their line of fire to the other characters on the map. There's a lot of uses for two squares of free barrier. And you know, overall, she's got a pretty good length to her dial there. The cosmic energy, of course, is going to give her some willpower and the protected outwit, which is great. 125 points is a lot, though. I mean, she's got good stats and some interesting powers, but I don't know that I like her for 125. 125, I really want to be like main attackers, especially at this point in the game. But if a character nowadays is over 100 points, they really gotta be powerful. And it's not that she's not powerful, but I just don't know that she's 125 points for me personally. But she is good and she does some really fun things. So yeah, she does have a 100 point line as well, where she starts with the perplex. And I think I prefer that line a lot more. Like I said, 125 is just too much. She has to be like a really powerful attacker. Um, but I like the 100 line, you know, a little bit less life, doesn't start with invuln, um, but I'd rather perplex her attack up to 12 to really hit with that in-cap and uh, get that free two squares of blocking train, um, as well as, you know, giving out those beneficial transformations to some of your other characters. And it gives you just that much more room for team building. So yeah, I think I prefer the 100 line over the 125. All right, moving on next, we have number 13, Icarus. The rare version here has that awesome gods hidden among mortals trait. Um, 10 movement with hypersonic speed and flight, 11 attack, 18 defense with invincible and 3 damage with some leadership. Again, he's 125 points. And he has another trait that says free once per game if Icarus was damaged by an attack since your last turn. Heal two clicks and when he attacks this turn, his targets can't use defense powers. Wow, just another amazing free once per game effect there. So if he's damaged by an attack since your last turn, you can just instantly heal him two clicks, and then when he attacks this turn, his targets can't use defense powers. 
that's so good because that means they can't use stop clicks either if they happen to be on their defense and just anything else that happens to be there. So that's just really, really powerful, really good way to get around some annoying stop clicks if you know that they're coming up anyway and really just to get through anything. It's really awesome. Uh, then he has a special attack power that gives him Colossal Stamina. And now note that Colossal Stamina technically isn't around anymore, at least going forward. But if anybody has a trait or a special power like this that specifically gives them Colossal Stamina, then they will get the 2017 rules version of Colossal Stamina just written out essentially as it was. So if he has two action tokens, he can still take another action at the cost of an unavoidable damage and not clearing his action tokens at the end of the turn. Uh, and then when Icarus hits, after resolutions, choose one, remove an action token from him, or heal a click. So that's pretty cool. I actually like that a lot. He could just keep going and going, and, uh, you know, you could just heal that click if you do take the unavoidable for using the Colossal Stamina. And, you know, he has Cosmic Energy team ability, so he's got willpower to roll for every turn. Um, and if you just happen to not get your willpower rolls, you have that to fall back on, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, he's a pretty solid 125-point... A hypersonic attacker. I will say that I wish he had a little bit more life to him, but he's got good reducers the whole time, and he's got that free once per game to heal two clicks. So unless your opponent manages to straight up kill him in one turn, he's basically got like eight clicks of health in a sense. And you gotta love invincible comboed with cosmic energy. Um, that's a pretty tough defense to get around, especially zipping around with the hypersonic. You know, he can be tough to target in the first place. So I think overall he is pretty solid, especially with the, uh, and, you know, hidden among mortals trait, so until he actually makes an attack or takes damage, he can't be targeted by non-adjacent characters, so um, you could really get him right into a position where he needs to be before he, uh, you know, makes that attack and uh, gets rid of his kind of immunity there that he has from that trait. Now, in this case, I think I prefer the 125 line. He also has a 100-point line that starts with the charge, and, you know, 11 movement charge, 10 attack, 3 damage is okay, but I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's worth 100 points, even with the colossal stamina and everything, you know, even perplexing his attack up to 11 or whatever. I don't know, he's only got 4 clicks of life, so I feel like at that point it's pretty easy to get, like, a 4 damage exploit weakness to just straight up kill him in one shot. Um, so I'd be, I'd be scared to play him at 100 points. I'd rather the 125 for him. Moving on next, again, we have Ajak, and this one is 150 points, 7 range, Cosmic Energy team ability, 11 running shot with flight, 12 attack penetrating blast, 18 invincible, 4 damage with probability control. What happened to the support character we saw before? This one is a beast. She also has the same gods hidden among mortals trait to uh, keep her protected for a while. Then she has another trait, Wise Leader of the Eternals, Leadership and Perplex. And when Ajak uses Leadership and succeeds, she can use Perplex an additional time this turn. That's amazing. So she is actually a great support character still with Leadership and Perplex traded and Probability Control throughout most of her dial. Um, and potentially a double Perplex if she succeeds on her Leadership. And then the fact that she's also a very powerful attacker with that Running Shot, 12 Attack, 4 Damage, Penetrating Blast with a 7 Range. Um, it's pretty, pretty great, actually. I like her a lot. Um, and that cosmic energy, of course, willpower to keep her going. She's protected outwit. Great stuff. Then she's got a 125 line where she starts out with precision strike instead. And I gotta say, I'd go all in on the 150 for this one. That 12 attack, 4 damage penetrating blast does it for me. Um, you know, 11 attack for 3 damage precision strike. You know, saving 25 points, I don't know if that's worth it. I think I'd rather keep the Invincible as well. She also drops to Invulnerability. So, yeah, I think I prefer the 150 line. That being said, 150 points is a lot nowadays. So, I'd probably try and pair her up with... Um, who was it we looked at earlier? Fastos, who can, like, give her an object, remove it. You know, give her a ranged combat expert, plus one or damage. <laughs> You know, she'll penetrating blast something with a 13 attack for 6 damage. And she's got her own prob, so that'd be a nice little fun combo there. And next up we got number 15, Thena. She's got Cosmic Eternal and Warrior keywords. She's got Cosmic Energy team ability. She's 150 points. She's starting off with a 12 movement charge, 12 attack precision strike, 18 defense, and a 4 damage with exploit weakness. She's got, of course, the God's Hidden Among Mortals trait again. 
She's also got another trait which gives her outwit, and when she uses it, if she chose a standard power the target can use, she can use that power until your next turn. That's actually really awesome. Um, not only do you take something away from them, but you can get it for yourself, so uh, it's almost like pick a power in a way. <laughs> if your opponent has a power that you might want or need right then, uh, you could take it for yourself, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, then her special defense power gives her impervious, and when Thena is the only target of an attack, before the attack is rolled, you may modify either the attacker's attack or damage by minus one. So that's really cool. I mean, if it's one of those characters that only hit for three and they don't have, like, exploit weakness or something, taking a minus one damage is going to mean they can't even hurt her regardless of if she were to roll impervious or not. And otherwise, I would probably just choose the minus one to attack in most scenarios just to make it that much harder to hit. But overall, I really like this style. Really good close attacker. Now, she does have a 125 point line where she starts off with 11 attack blades with the exploit weakness. It's not bad, but only five clicks of life. I feel like this is another scenario where I prefer the 150 dial just for the higher attack and defense and damage values and a little more life because, I don't know, five clicks of life for 125 points is a little rough for me. <laughs> a little a little dangerous, you know what I mean? Um, but I do like the 150 dial, that's pretty fun. Especially with that Outwit special, there's some pretty cool stuff you could do there. Coming up next we have number 16, Makari. She's got the Cosmic Eternals and Speedster keywords. Coming in at 125 points, Cosmic Energy, Team Ability, 4 range, 11 movement with Force Blast, 11 attack with Precision Strike, 3 damage with Shape Change, the same God's Hidden Among Mortals trait to keep her protected, the focused cosmic energy for speed trait that says hypersonic speed free modify makari's defense by minus three until your next turn this turn modify both her speed and range plus three that's really cool actually because um, when you hypersonic you half your range value so her four range would go down to two but since you replace and then modify the plus three to range would actually give her a five range, um, and plus three to speed means she's got a 14 speed, so that's already like a 19 square reach on her own, which is pretty insane. Um, I mean, minus three to defense could hurt if you don't get yourself back into a safe position afterwards, but then on her defense she has invulnerability and defend, but only during range attacks, which is pretty interesting. So, Invulnerability and Shape Change is still a pretty good defense, even if you minus three your defense. Um, just hope to get a good Shape Change roll, and even if you miss, you at least got Invuln to fall back on. So, I like her a lot. I mean, you also have the Force Blast, so you can knock people back after you hit them with the hypersonic speed, so that's always fun. Unlike the other ones, uh, she only has a 125 point line. She doesn't have like a 100 point line or 150 or anything, so... Um, but yeah, I like her. She seems fun. Up next is Druig. He's got Cosmic Energy, Team Ability, 7 range, triple target, 125 points on his top dial, or he does also have a 100 point line. But for 125 points, he's got Improved Targeting, Hindering Characters, and can make range attacks while adjacent. Um, he's got the Gods Hidden Among Mortals trait. He's got a special movement power starting out that gives him Mind Control and Sidestep. He also has uh, 12 attack with incapacitate, 18 with invincible, and a 3 damage with shape change. So, you know, pretty good defenses there. And gotta love a 12 attack, triple target, mind control. Uh, and then he's got a special attack power later on that gives him penetrating, psychic blast, and free, make a range attack, but only to target characters that Druig hit this turn. Hit characters are dealt one penetrating damage instead of normal damage. That's interesting. So you could actually triple target Penetrating Blast and then make another free attack to attack all of the ones that he hit for another Penetrating Damage. So that's not bad. Um, if you play him at 100 points, he actually starts out with that special attack power. So you get Mind Control Sidestep and you could actually then combo that with the Mind Control. So then after you move them around with the Mind Control, you could potentially hit them for another Penetrating Damage afterwards, which is pretty cool. So not bad, but 100 points again for... You know, four clicks of life with 17 toughness and some shape change. Kind of scary to rely on that, honestly. Um, I mean, improved targeting, hindering characters, and adjacent is really nice too, though. 
but I don't know if I, you know, the Gods Among Mortals trait will only protect them for so long, um, and then a 17 defense with toughness and shape change. I don't think it's going to keep him alive long enough to really, you know, do some cool stuff with his mind control on his uh, penetrating blast attack. So I think I prefer the 125 line for him because that invincible top dial is definitely going to be worth it. And that 12 attack for the mind control I think is really nice. But overall, I just prefer the 125 line I think is generally better for that 18 invincible and that 12 attack. Um, but moving on next, we have Gilgamesh. 125 points. He also does not have another starting line like most of the other ones, so just a straight up 125 beat stick. He's got 10 movement charge, 11 attack super strength, 17 invincible, 4 damage, um, improved movement for hindering, and destroys blocking. Destroys blocking is really good to get through those walls and those barriers and stuff. God's Hidden Among Mortals trait is good, of course. Then he has another trait that gives him close combat expert and combat reflexes. I actually love that. With that Hidden God's trait thing that he's got, uh, you could actually really bide your time, get close to them, and then charge through a wall, close combat expert them in the face with an object. You know, you're hitting, uh, you got 12 attacks, 6 damage that way. Then you've got at least combat reflexes to rely on because he only has a 17 defense for most of his dial, and then it drops to a 16. Um, but if you can keep him up close, then he'll have a 19, which is way better. <laughs> but then later on, he gets a special attack power that gives him a quake, and when he uses it after resolutions, choose one, give an action token to all hit targets, or all hit targets can use Earthbound. Neutralize until your next turn. Me personally, I would choose to give everybody action tokens unless they were already double tokened. Um, and honestly, I don't even know if I would like to use Quake unless there was just like a bunch of them grouped together because, you know, you're going to be knocking everybody back with the Quake and he's kind of relying on having the combat reflexes to keep his defenses up, so... Uh, for that reason, I'd probably just run in there and keep punching him with the close combat expert because, uh, like I said, unless there's a bunch group together, I don't think the Quake is going to be really worth it. But, you know, quaking them all to give them action tokens. Um, if they're against a wall where they're not going to go anywhere, then, you know, it could be useful, definitely. Really just kind of depends on the situation. But moving on next, we have the rare Kingo, who's only 100 points. Uh, has improved movement hindering, which doesn't matter anymore, of course. Like I said, the set was designed before the rules changes, so there's a few weird things in here like that. Uh, the Gods Hidden Among Mortals trait, of course. Um, another trait, Bushido with Bollywood style. Blades, Claws, Fangs, Precision Strike, Modify Kingo's Defense plus one for each action token he has. That's not bad. He could, you know, pretty much be an 18 defense most of the time, 19 defense. I like the fact that, you know, he's got willpower from the cosmic energy, so if you can manage to keep him at at least one to two action tokens most of the time, uh, you know, not have to clear completely, then his defense will be pretty decent the whole way down. But he starts off with this awesome special movement power that gives him hypersonic speed, and when Kingo uses it, you may roll a d6. If you do, during hypersonic speed, instead of one attack, he makes a number of close attacks equal to half the result using his printed combat values. So that's pretty cool. You roll a d6. If you roll like a 5 or 6, he could make up to three attacks during his movement for hypersonic speed. Um, so that could be awesome. You know, you can move, attack, move, attack, move, attack, move away. Ten movement, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty good. Gives you enough space to run between characters. If he had improved movement characters, that would be super nice. Unfortunately, he doesn't, so he will have to roll breakaway for each of those. Don't forget about that. Um, it might almost be more useful just to make all three in a row, or all two in a row, you know, however many attacks you roll for. Uh, but then again, you might have to actually technically break away to make the other attack. I'm not sure about that. Because normally, you know, it's move, attack, move, or you can just move your full movement and attack, or attack and then make your full movement. Um, so the fact that you could do two or three different attacks during the hypersonic speed, I'm not sure if you could move, attack, 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 move, <laughs> or not. I will, that is something I will have to look up, actually, because I am interested to know that. But assuming you can, that's what I would do. Uh, just make all the attacks at once, not have to worry about failing the breakaway roll, and, uh, because if you fail the breakaway roll, you, the action ends right there. You don't get to make your other attacks or have another chance at moving again. But the fact that, you know, Blades, Claws, Fangs can now work with basically any close attack. It used to be, like, a close action, but, uh, it's just any close attack now. I'm pretty sure you can roll for Blades, so... 
he could potentially do some pretty big damage with each attack there, especially if you roll high for that hypersonic attack and make like three different attacks. So overall pretty good. He's got a long dial, lots of steel energy and some flurry there at the end and some regen. So, you know, only 100 points. I think he's pretty well worth it. Uh, considering seven clicks long with tons of regen and steel energy, he could just heal himself back up. Um, and then, you know, for each action token he has, he's going to get a plus one defense as well. So it keeps his defenses up. He's very mobile with that hypersonic and then charge. So, yeah, I like. I think he's a pretty great close attacker. He's got celebrity eternals and martial artist keywords too. I don't think I mentioned that. Moving on next, we have another Fastos. 125 points, cosmic energy, team ability, 5 range, 10 movement with charge, 11 attack quake, 18 invincible. Pretty similar to his common version, Gods and Among Mortals trait. And then the another trait that gives him, at the beginning of the game, you may choose a Marvel team ability that isn't uncopyable. From the characters with the Eternal keyword can use the Chosen Team ability this game. That's great. I would definitely use him just for that. Give out something like Sinister Syndicate so you can all copy attack values. Um, defenders if you want to copy defense values. Um, their Shield if you want to up their range values. You could pick Hydra if you want to you know, lower defense values for your opposing characters. You could pick Masters of Evil if you wanted to lower their defense values against close attacks. Avengers Initiative is another great one if you need to see through hindering. Yeah, lots of, lots of good options there for copyable Marvel team abilities. But then he has a special damage power for his whole dial that gives him outwit, perplex, and when Fastos uses perplex to target a friendly character with the eternal keyword, after resolutions modify all adjacent friendly characters attack by plus one this turn. So that's awesome. Um, just when he targets a friendly character with the eternal keyword, so he could literally target himself with perplex, and then all adjacent characters get plus one attack as well. So this one's not bad. I feel like this one is a lot better at, you know, depending on what you need, the Marvel team ability of your choice thing could be really cool, and the perplex and upping all of your adjacent friendlies attack plus one when he uses it is really cool. I actually think I prefer the common version though, because you know, handing out objects and upping damage values and potentially handing out close range combat expert. There's a lot of really awesome things you can do with that, and he's a lot less points. 125 points for, you know, an okay close attacker that can up everyone's attack and give them a team ability. I mean, depending on the team ability you're giving out, if you're if you have a really cool strategy that relies on, you know, giving everybody a certain team ability, then maybe he's worth it. But otherwise, I think I prefer the common version over this one myself. But even so, he definitely has his uses. It's pretty cool. And last but not least, for the rare Eternals, we have Sprite. For 100 points, she's got uh, 11 movement with sidestep, 11 attack with telekinesis, 17 defense with super senses, and a 2 damage. Uh, 8 range is pretty great, and cosmic energy team ability, of course. Celebrity, cosmic, and eternal keywords. Uh, God's Hidden Among Mortals trait, of course, same thing, keeps her safe there. And then another trait that says Sprite's combat values can't be replaced or positively modified. And then Power, give Sprite a youth token, then turn her to click number X, where X is the number of youth tokens. So that's actually an amazing trait, now that I'm thinking about it. Power, give her a youth token, turn her to click number X, where X is the number of her youth tokens, so... You could literally hit her all the way to her last click and then just give her a power action to give her a youth token and turn her to click number one. Then she takes a couple more hits, give her a power action to turn her to click number two. <laughs> takes a couple more hits, give her a power action to put her on click number three. Um, I think you could use that very effectively at least the first two or three times. Um, after that, I don't know if it'd be worth it to turn her to click four or five. You know, maybe if you're on your last click, healing a click or two could be useful. I don't know, but um, the first couple times, that's going to be really annoying for sure, uh, for your opponent anyway. That is a really cool trait to have. Um, but I love her special damage trait also. Outwit, probability control, and shape change. Um, she already has super senses, so you're getting double rollouts, and you're getting outwit and prob, and TK as well with an 8 range, so... I think for 100 points, she's great. She can't do a lot of damage, so she's not really an attacker. She does um, a lot of good, you know, support stuff there with Outwit, Prob. She's really annoying to hit with Super Senses and Shape Change, and not to mention the Gods Hidden Among Mortals trait. 
as long as she doesn't even make an attack or be attacked, then she's not going to be able to be targeted at all for a long time. Um, some really interesting stuff there. Cosmic energy too, so she can't even be outwitted. Um, and, you know, she can you know, potentially roll willpower and keep moving herself around the map with sidestep as well. Um, or some phasing. Man, and a whole dial full of 11 movement and 11 attack. And considering her trait is called 11 Forever, I am assuming she likes the number 11. Again, I don't really know the characters very well. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm horrible. Haven't even seen the movie yet, but I really like this sprite, and especially because she has a 35 point line where she doesn't get that 11 Forever trait, but she still has the gods hidden among mortals and the outwit probability control and shape change so again 35 points for double rollouts and the fact that your opponent can't target her at all until she makes an attack or gets hit by an adjacent character um, and 11 movement with face teleport to basically run away as soon as anybody gets close um, and again with the cosmic energy so they can't outwit her or anything and you know the 8 range really comes in handy for the outwit and prop control so I really really like the 35 point line and honestly I like the 100 point line too. I normally don't like characters that are so expensive um, that basically can't do more than a 2 damage. Um, but I mean, she does have precision strike for most of her dial, so she could potentially still hit for 1 no matter what. Um, and 100 points starting out with sidestep and TK gives her a little more utility. And the fact that even if they do run up and hit her, she can just turn herself back to click number 1 pretty easily. So she's going to be super, super annoying to deal with, and I love it. <laughs> so. Probably my favorite figure of the set so far, honestly. Um, if nothing else, just for the 35 point line, because that is actually a great, um, you know, cosmic support piece or celebrity or eternal support piece. So I love that sprite figure, but we'll move on now to the last two figures, the chases. And that's starting us off with Crow. He comes in at 125 points. He's got six range double target. 10 movement with sidestep, 12 attack penetrating blast, 18 with impervious, and 4 damage. Improved targeting for hindering train and adjacent characters is always useful. He's got traded stealth and protected from incapacitate and mind control, which is actually really good against all the Eternals in this set, considering so many of them had incap and mind control. Then he's got free, choose a character within range and line of fire until your next turn. That character can't have their combat values positively modified. Oof, that's rough. I like that a lot. Very reminiscent of the Outsiders team ability, which I'm a huge fan of. Then he also has a special defense power later that gives him toughness and double power. Roll a d6 and heal Crow equal to the result. That's pretty great. Super regen there. Heal him up to six clicks, potentially, uh, potentially get him all the way back to top click, which is pretty great. I wish it was a stop click, though. It's not a stop click, so it could be kind of hard to pull off. Um, but he does have a little shape change there to go with his toughness so and some phasing to get away if need be so You know not bad. Oh, but he starts off first of all with a damage power that gives him protected outwit and power enhancement leadership and shape change So you're starting off with impervious and shape change. You got double rollouts You got leadership and power enhancement and outwit which are four really great damage powers to have four of the best ones and this dude's got deviant monster pass ruler and warrior keywords I could definitely see playing this guy on a monster team, um, maybe even using Pass or Ruler or Warrior. Those are all pretty good uh, generic keywords to mess with, throw him on a team with for fun. Um, looks like a lot of fun. I do wish he had like some running shot maybe instead of sidestep. He's a little slow getting into the action, but I mean he can do a lot of damage himself and he can support your team a lot as well as basically just regen himself all the way back to top click. So not too shabby. He's pretty cool. All right, but moving on now to our final chase and our final figure in the set, number 23, Unimind, which I, I do know that Unimind is basically all of them fused into one being or something, which is freaking awesome. It reminds me of Dragon Ball Z or something. Everybody just fuses into one ultimate being. Pretty freaking cool. Um, now this thing comes in at a whopping 300 points or 150, but I personally prefer the 300 line myself. This thing's got an 11 movement running shot with flight, 12 attack penetrating blast, 19 defense with invincible, 5 damage with outwit, and a whopping 10 range double target. So that's 
freaking awesome. I mean, by itself, it's got a 16 square reach to running shot, penetrating blast with a 12 attack, 5 damage. And then it's got a 19 defense to, you know, with invincible and power cosmic to keep it safe with. So that's pretty well worth 300 points, I'd say, especially with improved targeting for hindering and adjacent characters. So you could still penetrating blast even if they ran up next to you. Then this thing's got two traits, which is Unimind has protected opposing probability control. And when Unimind rolls a single D6 for shape change, super senses, etc., increase the result by plus one. So this thing, let's see, it's got impervious on a lot of its clicks too. So it gets plus one to its impervious rolls. It's got super senses and shape change comboed on a lot of its clicks. So that's four through six on both super senses and shape change. Um, it's got blades claws there on its uh, beginning, its other dial and uh, midway through this one. So you potentially could hit for seven with blades claws fangs which is pretty nuts. Oh, and let's not forget that it has willpower from cosmic energy, which means it's also gonna get plus one to its willpower rolls as well. So that's pretty freaking awesome all the way around, especially since it's protected from your opponent's probability controls as well as their outwits from the power cosmic, uh, means that your opponent can't really do anything against this. You know, the best hope is to prob their own rolls to hit it, but um, it's gonna be hard to do when you got all these plus ones to your rollouts. Uh, and then it's got another trait that says at the beginning of your turn, choose one to use this turn, close combat expert, range combat expert, or colossal stamina. At the beginning of your turn, if Unimind has two action tokens, choose one that you didn't choose on your last turn to use this turn, phasing teleport as free or regeneration as free. So again, a uh, very amazing trait to have there. You know, at the beginning of each of your turns, you can choose Close Combat or Range Combat Expert or Colossal Stamina. And again, like I said earlier, it's going to be written out the same way it always used to be. So if it has two action tokens, it can take another action at the cost of an unavoidable damage after resolution. So that's awesome. But then it also has the ability to, at the beginning of your turn, if it has two actions, you can also choose Free Phase Teleport or Free Regen, as long as you didn't choose it last turn. So you could keep Colossal Stamina pushing and then you could free face teleport and then, you know, free regen on the next turn to heal up a couple clicks and then free face teleport again and do all the crazy stuff. And being able to choose close range combat expert, I mean, if 12 for 5 penetrating wasn't enough, how about a 13 for 6 penetrating? That sounds nice. So all in all, great 300 point character right here. Now, the only thing I don't like about this figure that's a pretty big downside uh, for me personally is how far and how fast its defense drops. I mean, you got that starting 19, which is great, but you only got two clicks of an 18 after that, then you got three clicks of a 17, followed by another two clicks of 16, followed by another three clicks of 15 defense. Now, like I said, with the double rollouts on the Super Senses and Shape Change, with a four through six on both of them, it's gonna be hard enough to hit her anyway. Plus, she's got Hypersonic on those clicks, so they're going to be hitting and running, and then you potentially got free phase teleport or free regen to heal up too. So I can understand why they drop the defense values so low, um, because they want to give you a chance to actually finish this thing off if you can manage to even hurt it in the first place. So yeah, pretty awesome. I think in like, you know, four or five hundred point games, this thing could be just nuts. Uh, with a little bit of support from maybe a few other Eternals or maybe a few other Cosmic characters. Uh, it does have Cosmic Deity, Eternal, and Pass. So, you know, you could throw it on Latveria too. You could combo with some crazy Latveria stuff. For the 150 point line, I don't really like it as much, mainly because it starts with a charge, but it does have 12 attack blades and exploit. And like I said, plus one to your blades rolls. So we're talking like um, you could easily roll potentially five, six, sevens on your blades which is pretty crazy with exploits, nice. You got plus one to your roll for impervious. It can't be outwitted because power cosmic. Um, you would have to be worried about penetrating blasts, getting through that though. And for only six clicks, I just, I don't like the 150 as much because only six clicks long. If they do manage to penetrating blast you, which they could, it's a very common power right now. You're gonna be dropping to um, like a 15 defense but, you know, you do have double rollouts on a 4 through 6 to rely on, but if, if they have something to get around that, you know, 
one of those good old Precision Strike Battle Fury type pieces, then you barely just have regular Super Senses at that point. So, I don't know. Um, it really comes down to, I guess, what you're facing at that point. If they don't have any Battle Fury, maybe not enough Precision Strike or any other way to get through the Super Senses, then um, they might not be able to touch you even with only a 15 defense. So, then you could just free regen right back up. So, it's still a pretty good dial. I just... I'm just a little more worried that it's a little more susceptible to being killed. Um, I feel like the 300.1, you know, it's a lot harder to get it off the first click, and then it's got the regen, and then, you know, it just seems a lot more deadly to me. So I like the 300 one more, but a one-man army is not going to win you any meta events, probably. And I would be on the lookout for poison, too. I mean, you know, poison is kind of a big thing right now as well, so... You could easily poison through the uh, Super Senses and Shape Change clicks. If you're not careful, you could get poisoned to death that way. Um, or, you know, if you're going against it, like I said, I would try to poison her. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, really, really fun character. Really cool. I love all the freaking 10 range penetrating blasts, the plus one to all your rolls. Really cool stuff. Really fun. Definitely the chase that I would prefer to pull, uh, even though the other crow guy is pretty cool for monster teams, and I do love monsters, but... I think everybody wants that Unimind Chase. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You pretty much heard all my thoughts on everything, but I will just say that my favorite figures are Sprite, and I wouldn't mind having that Unimind Chase. It's pretty cool, um, and I'm probably going to go out of my way to get that Sprite, just because it's such a good 35-point support piece and really annoying 100-point support piece. So I think that one's going to be fun. I also really liked both versions of Icarus, he has some amazing once-per-game free uh, powers to do. And the common Fastos that can give out, you know, close combat expert, range combat expert, that's super awesome. I love things that can do that, especially with how good those powers are right now. So those are some of my favorite pieces right now. But there's lots of really cool, fun stuff in this set. I kind of also like how everything is so, like, high points. You know, it kind of goes against the grain a little bit of everything else we've been getting with all these, like, super low point dials. So that's a little bit more fun. Um, I do hope to get some of this set to do an unboxing for, but like I said, I don't have any right now. I might not get any for a while, and by the time I do, it might not be worth doing an unboxing for. So we'll just have to see what happens. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. Let me know in the comments what your favorite figures from this set are. And if you like the movie or not, should I go see it? I'm probably eventually going to go see it. If not, I'll eventually see it on Disney+, Plus. I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, let me know all your thoughts on all that stuff. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And if you guys would like to help support the channel even further, you can check the links in the description for our Patreon so you can see your name here in the credits as well as some other awesome bonus stuff. So check that out if you're interested. But that's going to do it for this video. So thank you guys again so much for watching. And until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters signing off.